friends, Dr. Marta Perez, OBGYN here. Welcome back to my channel where we do educational videos about pregnancy and birth every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe. Today's episode is on bed rest. Speaking of bed rest, I would love to just go lay in my bed that's right behind me. But a question I get all the time is, when is bed rest recommended? Or do I have to go on bed rest, doctor? Especially as a high risk doctor, I get a lot of patients who either reported to me that they were told to be on bed rest or asked me if bed rest is required for their condition. So I wanna clear up a lot of misconceptions about bed rest. So what is bed rest? The definition of bed rest, there's no right and wrong definition exactly, but what it basically means is asking someone to stay in bed for a majority or all of the day, only getting out of bed for certain activities. For example, you can get up and go to the bathroom and get right back in bed, or you can get up, go downstairs, get some food, but maybe you eat that food in bed. It is really trying to be recumbent in a lying position or semi-lying position for a majority of the day for as long as someone says. So is bed rest recommended? And the answer is basically not at all. So why would bed rest be recommended? So sometimes you might hear bed rest mentioned by mostly older family or friends who were pregnant decades ago. And the thought was that the physical exertion of being up or about or physically exerting oneself could cause an increase in negative or unwanted outcomes if someone had certain conditions like preterm labor or preeclampsia or something like that. However, bed rest is no longer recommended for almost any condition in pregnancy. Why is it not recommended anymore? Well, two reasons. One, it doesn't work. And two, there are risks to bed rest. So one, it doesn't work. So bed rest was studied in relationship to especially preterm labor, someone who was going into labor too early or their cervix was dilating too early saying, well, maybe if you stay in bed, avoid gravity, avoid exertion, your body will keep you pregnant for longer. The problem is it doesn't work. Between people who lived their lives normally and the people who stayed in bed, nobody stayed pregnant longer or shorter. So it doesn't work to prevent the increase in complications or from the progression of a certain complication from happening. The same with preeclampsia, being up and having normal activity doesn't significantly worsen preeclampsia. So it's not recommended because bed rest just doesn't work. The other thing is it does have risks. When you are pregnant, your body is more likely to have a serious life-threatening blood clot that starts in your legs but can move up to your lungs. You're more likely to have this in pregnancy for several reasons. Part of it is that your actual clotting factors are more likely to have blood clots in pregnancy. And the other thing is that the veins in your legs have more slow movement, what we call stasis, and opportunity for blood clots to develop in the blood vessels. And inactivity is associated with an increased risk of blood clots. That's why you often hear that people get blood clots after like a really, really long plane flight or something like that. Inactivity plus increased risk of blood clots from pregnancy means that you are very high risk for blood clots. And blood clots can be very serious and they can be life-threatening, so we want to avoid them. The other thing is that being on bed rest for a significant amount of time can actually cause a deconditioning. It's not good for your bones, it's not good for your muscles, it's not just like good for your health. So there are, again, no benefits to bed rest for any of the medical conditions, especially preeclampsia, preterm labor, plus risks to bed rest. And since there are no benefits, the risks are the predominant thing that we need to avoid. So why do you hear sometimes about bed rest? Like it's not just our grandmas or our moms or our aunts talking about bed rest. Sometimes I still hear, doctor, this other doctor put me on bed rest, or I hear a friend say, I'm on bed rest. And bed rest is universally not recommended by ACOG or Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine. I won't say that this is never the case. I mean, there are some very, very serious conditions, like it, very serious heart conditions that it might be recommended for having acutely have had a surgery, like if you have broke your hip during pregnancy and you, know, you may not be able to move around, et cetera. However, for normal conditions, this is not recommended. I do think sometimes when people are saying that, what they're actually talking about is something called modified bed rest. So modified bed rest doesn't have a black and white definition, but what it basically means is not bed rest, just taking it easy. So some people may be told, you know, you have a job where you're up and really active. You shouldn't be working anymore due to this complication. You should be taking it easy at home. The differences between modified bed rest and bed rest, again, neither of them have these firm definitions, but like I said, on bed rest, you're trying to stay in the bed for like as much as possible. Any activity you can do in the bed, you should stay in the bed for. 
Modified bed rest is more like you should be taking it easy at home, but you can still prepare food and eat it at a table. You can still be up and showering. You can still do like some normal activities, go to the grocery store and pick something up. You can still be doing normal activities, not trying to stay in the bed 24 seven, but maybe you're taking it easy. Maybe you're no longer going to work. Maybe you've cut out some of the other more strenuous activities that you were doing before. And so I do think there is space for modified bed rest and I don't even call it that. We shouldn't really be calling it that because of the misconception that it is bed rest and bed rest has risks. What I like to call it is either activity restriction or activity limitations. As you saw from my video on exercise and pregnancy, overwhelmingly, it's good to be active and do strenuous activity like exercise and pregnancy. That is associated with positive pregnancy outcomes. However, there are some conditions that someone may have either they developed during the pregnancy or had before and brought them in where activity limitations are what is recommended. So again, I don't like the term modified bed rest because I think it gets confused with bed rest, which we don't recommend. And I recommend using terms like activity modification. If your doctor tells you to be on bed rest, I think they also probably mean modified bed rest, but they're just kind of using the colloquial term. But I would ask them for clarification because I don't want someone being in bed 23.5 hours of the day, that makes them at high risk for a blood clot and bone and muscle weakness. So clarify with your doctor what they mean. They may be like, oh, well, I mean, you shouldn't be working and back off on your exercise routine, but you can be up and about your house doing normal activity. Just sit down if you feel contractions or if you feel unwell. What about patients who are hospitalized? So I get this a lot from my hospitalized patient. Patients sometimes are hospitalized during pregnancy because a certain complication of pregnancy is high risk enough that there might need to be an intervention emergently on behalf of either the pregnant person or the fetus. I myself was hospitalized when I had preterm rupture of membranes. My water broke before 37 weeks and therefore I was hospitalized until my body went into labor. That's a very common reason. And again, even for most, overwhelmingly most hospitalized patients, strict bed rest is usually not recommended, but modified bed rest is fine. So I was walking around the floor, walking around my room. I went on, you know, little field trips down to the cafeteria. There was a garden outside. I, you know, walked myself down there and read a book out there for a little bit. So I was not necessarily, I was hospitalized, but I wasn't staying in the bed for the whole day. I also got up and sat in the chair next door, etc. So most hospitalized patients are also not on bed rest. Now the hospital bed is the biggest and takes up a lot of the room in a lot of hospital rooms. So you might actually spend a lot of the day in bed just by necessity or convenience, but you can be up and moving around and often walking the floor is encouraged. If you're really spending most of your time in bed, we put on sequential compression devices on your calves. Those are those things that wrap around and then they inflate. They help keep your blood moving to help prevent blood clots. So I hope this episode was helpful. Bed rest is like a little pet peeve of mine because I hear it thrown around, but it's like really not recommended 99.99% of the time. So hopefully this sheds a little light on the differences between bed rest and modified bed rest or activity restrictions and helps you feel more comfortable that like, even if you have a complication in pregnancy, kind of just being up and walking around and doing some normal activities that are low exertion is still safe and recommended. And if your doctor says bed rest, question them on that and say, I thought bed rest was not recommended for most conditions. That's what Dr. Perez told me. Thanks so much for coming today. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next Friday for another video on pregnancy health and postpartum and birth and all of that. Take care.